Today marks two weeks since my scaphalunate ligament reconstruction surgery. And um, if you watched the first video, you saw me just showing you a little bit of how, what my mobility looked like at the time before the surgery. So I had my surgery on a Tuesday and they did a nerve block in my shoulder. Um, I, I, um, from what I remember, it felt like they were, so they were doing an ultrasound here, just like finding the certain, the group of nerves and then they uh, did a nerve block. So I could not feel my entire arm um, until I started feeling it more on Wednesday afternoon. The nurse, when, when I was leaving, she like, I, I watched her touch my fingers and she was like, can you feel this? Can you feel this? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I, after I got in the car and my friend was driving me home, I realized um, when I was touching them, I realized I thought that I could feel it when she was touching them. But if I would like look away and then just like touch a finger, I couldn't tell which finger I was touching. I did. I actually didn't have any feeling. Um, so it was kind of crazy and a weird sensation. Um, I would um, sleep in the corner of our um, of a of our couch <clears throat> and just rest my arm on the pillow next to me. So most of the time my arm was elevated, and I think that helped a lot. I had some swelling. It mostly could be seen um, just like here in the in my hand. Um, this, this is just padding right now, but it was like raised slightly. I don't wear a ring or anything, so I can't measure how swollen my fingers got, but it was, um, it wasn't until Wednesday night that I really started feeling the, feeling the, um, nerve block wearing off and realized I needed to make sure I was taking the medication for pain that they had given me so that it wouldn't, it wouldn't get out of hand. And Thursday, I actually took, Thursday was the first day that I started taking as much, like the maximum dosage of that narcotic that they gave me. They said I could take one to two every four to six hours. And it was like, I really needed to take two every four hours. Um, I really didn't like that. Like it, I don't know how to describe how it made me feel mentally other than my brain running around in circles inside of my head. Um, I often felt, it was almost like I felt dizzy, but not actually dizzy. So I was hopeful that I could get off those as soon as possible and really wanted to, but Thursday, the pain was at the max. Like I have not felt any pain worse than Thursday. Um, it might be worth noting that Tuesday evening when I was like leaving the hospital, I felt super nauseous and I asked I could have some nausea medication just because the last time that I had a surgery I felt very very nauseous and I, I couldn't keep um I, I puked maybe 20-30 minutes after I'd taken a painkiller and I didn't know if I had puked the painkiller itself so I just didn't take another one I would rather err on that side um because I have a high pain tolerance and I just I just thought, well, whatever, it'll be okay. And it wasn't okay. And things went downhill super fast. So I asked for a nausea medication and they gave me a off brand of Zofran, which is like a nausea medication that you can dissolve under your tongue so you don't have to swallow it. Um, and that helped a lot. And I waited like 30 minutes and then started drinking water and it was fine. Um, I will say the, they, so they did a nerve block and they also put me out entirely. Um, the, when the, the medication, the, the anesthesia that puts, me, puts you out, it does cause constipation. And I experienced that the last time I had a surgery, which was, um, I mentioned that previously, but I had my appendix removed. And that kind of constipation makes you feel just absolutely disgusting. You're hungry and then you also don't want to eat. Um, like when you get hungry, you don't want to eat because you feel like you're just full even though your stomach is empty. Um, it's really weird and I took Miralax, just like the, an over-the-counter uh, stool softener. I took that the day before surgery, Monday night, and then I also took it Tuesday night after I got back home from the surgery. So I, I believe I also took it again Wednesday um, just to be safe and I didn't have any constipation. So I'm actually really glad I did that because that just adds a whole nother, like a whole nother sphere of and reasons for feeling bad after surgery. I already felt really tired. Um, 
but so they yeah they did knock me out the when they were when the one guy was doing the nerve lock um in this shoulder the uh the uh, another lady was uh i think he said he, that she was putting fentanyl and something else in my iv he's like yeah she's i'm i'm gonna I'm gonna make some of your muscles and your arm jump around, but you're not gonna care because she's giving you fentanyl and something else and uh, you you really won't care. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I remember this. And he's like, no, you probably you probably won't. He's like, uh, some, a lot of a lot of people are chatty while we're doing this, but you, you won't remember any of it. Mostly, mostly young ladies are chatty um, while we're doing this. And I was like, oh, okay. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna try to remember this. And I do, so that's funny. Um, but when, yeah, the nerve block, he was like, like a certain, like, like my bicep would like flex, like, like jump. Um, and it was like a really weird sensation, but it was interesting. It, I mean, it didn't hurt or anything. It just felt weird and funny. Um, but so anyway, yes, uh, I highly recommend in advance of the surgery, using some kind of stool softener, just in case you end up do getting constipated. Um, or just like to fight the effects of the the anesthesia that puts you out. So I was asleep for that three or so hours during the surgery. And um, fast forward back again. So I had said that uh, Thursday was, the surgery was on Tuesday and Thursday was the worst pain day. Thursday, the arm, the nerve block was definitely totally worn off. Wednesday, still throughout the day, I would like wake up from a nap and I would it would feel like my arm was like up against my body or I like before I opened my eyes I was like oh why am I holding my arm like this and then I would open my eyes and my arm was like just on the pillow where I had left it um so I definitely couldn't feel it as much Wednesday um the Friday that Friday was when things started getting better and I was really grateful for that um with the surgery being Tuesday finishing waking up from it Tuesday night <clears throat> I, so that was, uh, there were two full days after the surgery where I was taking the narcotics and then Friday I was just like, I want to be done. I'm so done. <laughs> and, um, I had started on Thursday because it was so bad. I had gotten some recommendations from, um, some friends in the medical field and I had been on Thursday. I started, I was taking the narcotics every, I believe every six hours. Um, I have a, I have a, I had a record of how often I was taking everything. And uh, the, the narcotic that they gave me was Norco. And I, I can share that, the, the details for that in uh, the description of this video, if that'd be helpful for anyone. But uh, I had started taking Tylenol in between those. So the Tylenol was to help with the swelling too. The swelling was also the worst on Thursday, um, the swelling and the pain. And so Friday I was like, well, I wonder if I can just like take the Tylenol that I've been taking and keep like maybe skip a, dors a dose of Norco um, or just like see how it goes. Maybe I can, cause the, the Norco has, um, the Norco has acetaminophen. I, I might've said I started taking Tylenol in between it that was wrong. I just was taking ibuprofen in it. Tylenol has acetaminophen in it. So does the Norco. And you don't want to take too much acetaminophen um, because of, I believe, how that can affect your liver. So anyway, I was taking ibuprofen in between the doses of Norco on Thursday. And on Friday night was the first, Friday night was the last time that I took any Norco. And I was really grateful for that. And then I replaced that Norco with, I replaced that Norco with just regular acetaminophen, um, Tylenol. And so now all I've been taking are those, um, just like regular off-brand acetaminophen Tylenol and, um, and then just regular off-brand ibuprofen. This has been really helpful to not be on the Norco. I, I last took the Norco Friday night um, and I did not feel normal mentally until Monday morning, which was great because I went back to work Monday morning. So that was like a full day and two nights before I was back 
Um, but no, two days and three nights before I was back to the ability to drive. I talked to the doctor, um, I believe it was on Wednesday evening, and he had said, I talked to him on the phone, he had said that the surgery went well um, and just recommended to keep it elevated to help with the swelling because I, even though I iced it pretty consistently Tuesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I, I iced it consistently from Tuesday night through at least Saturday night. Um, but this is so thick. Um, this, this splint that I have it in is so thick that, um, I couldn't really feel the cold through it. So what I ended up doing was leaving some of the ice pack across here and then also letting the ice pack rest here on my skin because I feel figure, you know, if this gets cold, maybe it like goes, gets cold um, underneath the splint as well. And, and then I did the same here, either putting the ice on my fingers or the ice pack on my fingers or like holding it kind of in my hand, which was actually really helpful. My thumb was, visibly swollen it was mainly my thumb and my palm here that was that were visibly swollen um in that first week after surgery and um just keeping the ice pack around around the edges was really helpful um and yeah so when i talked to the doctor he had said he had said mainly keep it elevated that'll help a lot with the swelling that'll help most because it's so thick it can't really feel the cool and the reason that they don't put you right into a hard cast, at least this is what he had mentioned, was they want the swelling to go down. So um, this is like, this is like flexible. And uh, this is just like an elastic, elastic bandage on top of um, this cotton stuff. I had kind of, this cotton material was kind of sticking out through um, all around the outside. And I kind of like, tucked it in because I didn't, didn't like the look of it. And then I tucked the bandage in around the top of it. Um, <clears throat> I have found that you can like stuff Kleenexes or so stuff in here and like just store it. I was in a wedding last weekend and uh, hid a little bit of Kleenex in there. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so anyway, the doctor said, just keep it elevated. And when uh, the swelling like We'll put the, we'll take this off, take the stitches out and put the, put the hard cast on when, uh, with your, with your next appointment. So my next appointment is tomorrow, which will be two weeks and one day, um, from the date of the surgery. They wanted to have it last Friday, but this was, that was when I was like gone for the wedding. So I pushed it out further. Um, this this splint is kind of cool so i can feel like this i don't know if you can hear that but it's like a metal it feels like metal it might be plastic um it just feels hard uh splint that comes down here and then uh and then comes up like this so it feels like it's shaped like this and it's kind of it's kind of rounded here um i did um i did once feel like it was itching right here, which is where the incision was. And I wasn't thinking about that. And I like pushed on it just a little bit and it was like, ouch, <laughs> that was like earlier on. So I've just, I've just avoided pushing on it on, on this side of it, which was not very smart. <laughs> um, I just was telling my roommate, um, I figured out, I found out one thing that, that is painful to do. And I was like, well, two things. And she's like pushing on the incision site. And I was like, well, that, yes. <laughs> but also like trying to put on a sock. Like I couldn't, I can't really grip or like pull or anything. Um, when I talked to the doctor the day after the surgery, he also said that just moving your fingers would be helpful with swelling. So um, my, my thumb actually, even today feels like it's like partly asleep. Like it kind of feels tingly almost like the, the nerve lock didn't completely wear off. Um, I don't think that would be the nerve lock, but um, I can, uh, this is like my hand resting. And this is as far as I can open it without like feeling any tension or pressure in here. And then if I go further, I can start to feel like it's like pulling a little bit in, in my wrist. Um, but that's not bad. 
and when I I can kind of make a fist a little bit I don't really have any grip though like it this is this is pretty my grip is pretty weak but I am yeah I mean I'm I'm progressing and it's really not swollen and I'm I can I can like carry stuff around like really light like pieces of paper and um that's that's helpful I did this last weekend when I was at the wedding I did a bunch of line dancing and there's one dance that I like uh led like the I don't know if you know anyone knows the church clap but I was like clapping over my head when we were supposed to be clapping and then like pointing like moving this way moving that way going back and I was like okay I'm not going to cut back on any of the painkillers because I know that when I move around a lot it hurts more so I took like the full dose of Tylenol and ibuprofen that day that I had that I have been taking and I felt sore on Sunday but I it didn't like feel more painful so I and I generally only feel pain when it's like time for the next painkiller or like a couple hours after the next painkiller but I will say that yesterday I had I, instead of taking ibuprofen in the morning, Tylenol in the afternoon, and then ibuprofen again at night, I just had the first two doses. I only had ibuprofen in the morning and Tylenol in the afternoon. This morning, I felt, I could like feel my arm, my, my wrist a little bit more, and I could like, it felt like I could feel the incision site, but it wasn't like super, super painful. And I had, I took some ibuprofen maybe at like 9 or 10 a.m. So a little bit later than normal, even even though I had skipped the evening dose last night. So that's encouraging to me. I don't want to keep taking all of this medication. And I might see if I can... I, I'm, I'm planning on just seeing how today goes with just the ibuprofen in the morning. Um, and maybe be ready to take a little bit at night. I also have been propping my arm up at night like this on a pillow on a large pillow next to me i shoved two pillows inside of a pillowcase to kind of like give it some some actual support <clears throat> and lying on my back so it is up higher and it won't i won't like do anything stupid or roll over on it or anything like that i can if i like grab something and i pull i do feel it like that it will be painful like if i get in bed and I try to use this arm to help me get in bed it does hurt um but I so it's really not a it's not a temptation to use the arm at all this the arm or the hand at all because of just I know that it'll hurt um so uh one of one of my friends came shopping with me and like put everything in the car and like didn't even let me use my right hand and was just really sweet and helping out but I, I have found when I'm doing stuff, um, just when I'm doing stuff like shopping or like going on uh, running errands, I will, it is helpful to wear a sling. They, they sent me home with a, with an arm sling for it, my, for my wrist. It is helpful. Um, not just because the sling acts like a pocket and women's clothing has no pockets. Um, and I can stick my phone and my keys in the sling, but also just because, um, I, it's, it's, obvious to people that I have it just I, I have an injury and I don't have the ability to do things like I normally would so people will hold the door open if I, if like one hand is full they realize I can't get the door with my other hand so anyway I am getting the stitches out tomorrow which I'm very excited about and I'm really hopeful that, that they'll let me see and watch them get the stitches out because I think that's really cool and then they'll put this in the hard cast. So I will plan on making a third video at some point with the hard cast. Right now, I they had initially told me that I would be in this in the hard cast for 10 weeks. 
I don't know if the time in the splint, these two weeks in the splint count towards that 10 weeks. I hope so, but we'll see. But then after the 10 weeks is when they would put the, uh, when they would take the pins out. So anyway, that is, that is the update. The second update for this scapulonate ligament reconstruction surgery. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I don't really check my YouTube very much, but I will be happy to if, um, if I see your questions. So I hope that this is helpful if you're planning on having this surgery. Um, yeah, I would just say trust the sovereignty of God and... Um, Pray that the doctor does a good job. I'm excited to see how this, I'm really excited to see how this gets, um, how, how I recover essentially. Um, because I know that it was not a, a, a good solution to just keep hoping the pain would go away <laughs> and uh, uh, continue to do nothing and ignore the problem because of the problem was just getting worse. So for those reasons, I was really excited to actually do the surgery. Anyway, this video is too long, and if you watch to this point, thank you for watching. <laughs>